Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Auto Trail Frontier Cherokee. So start we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. You've got this locker here which has got your leisure batteries and your hookup point in which opens with the West Alloy Square key. Put your foot underneath and just help it up. And then you do have your leisure battery. You've got room for a secondary leisure battery should you want one. And you've got your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up, get your hookup lead, expose the ends, hold the collar back and slide on to the hookup point. Hook the vehicle up first, then the power source and then if you just pop your lead through the little groove there so you, that you can shut the locker down. You've got space for your hookup lead when you're traveling, your leveling ramps, all your wet equipment and going to here. And you'll notice you've got your gray tap here, so this is gray waste. So anything that's gone down a plug hole, such as the shower water, hand basin water, and dishes water, will all come into here. You drive over a motorhome service bay on the way out of your site, and you'd simply open and drain out the waste water. It's very important in the winter as well that you drain this off because you wouldn't want it to freeze as it could crack and damage the pipework and tanks which is quite an expensive repair and isn't covered under any sort of warranty. Storage behind the kitchen cupboards. You've got your external shower point so you've got a bullfinch connection in there and on the other end of the hose is a trigger gun. As long as the pump's on on the main control panel, which I'll go through when we do the inside of the motorhome, you can push it in, turn it to the temperature you want from off to cold to hot. You've got to have had the hot water boiler on to get hot water, so don't expect to just use it and get hot water straight away. As long as the hot water system's been on, you will have hot water in the boiler. And this is great for the dogs, the kids, the bikes, and the boots. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your cassette new. So pushing in releases the door. Ensure that the blade on the bottom bowl of the toilet is in the closed position. If it was to be in the open position, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to lift the orange handle and slide it out like I'm doing now. That means it's closed. Handle there so you can drag it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. Remove the cap. Press the button which allows a bit of air in, keeps it from glugging. Tip out, once you've tipped it out, there is normally a tap so you put some water in. Put the cap back on, give it a shake and tip out again. And then if you're using the chemical, 120ml of the chemical, you've either the blue or the green into here and it's good to go. If you're using the tablet form which is in the cellophane sachets, put the cassette in completely dry, go in, open the blade, Flush a pint of water into the cassette, followed by a tablet in the cellophane form of either the blue or the green. But ask which your site when you book which chemical they prefer, the blue or the green. Coming out just behind the back wheel on the driver's side, you've got your fresh water drain off point. So you'd simply turn here, and this is your fresh water. So say you've taken on contaminated water, you're draining down for the winter, which is very important that you drain the, win the water off in the winter as you wouldn't want it to freeze like I've just said about the waste. Or you're simply not using it for a couple of weeks, you will want to drain off the water so it doesn't go stagnant and you do it from here. So you can either do it at home on your driveway or you can do it when you leave site to ensure that the vehicle is water free. Around the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light reverse camera, bike rack. So, this is a two bike rack, so two bikes on here. These through the spokes tie the wheels down to the rails, and then these through your crossbars. Then, I would advise putting some sort of bike lock around the bikes. Full size spare wheel underneath here, which opens with the main key, habitation key, the round one. Big note underneath there removes the acrylic panel. And then to gain access to your roof, you do have a ladder so you can use the other key. Pop that in there. Fold it down and you can gain access to the roof for cleaning and servicing. Coming 
from the passenger side of the van. Storage underneath your double bed. So you've got your carpet in there. You've noticed you've got your own and winding handle, your after bar, your boilers in here. I'll explain more about this when I'm inside the vehicle. So you've emptied your fresh water from the driver's side to fill it. You fill it from here on the passenger side. So using the round headed key, this is a lockable cap. Put a hose pipe in there, wait until it either overflows outside the vehicle or you can see on board on the control panel how much water is on board. So it'll go in increments of fives. And what you can do is take yourself a hose pipe with you. It doesn't have to be a food graded hose pipe as long as it's brand new and never been used in the garden and some hose connections because it's mainly just a brass tap. So you will need that little bit that screws on to the brass tap. Carry that with you on board and then you can fill your fresh water from here. External gas points, so you get a bullfinch connection, a red connector there. You'll need some gas piping and some Jubilee clips and then you can connect it to your Kadak, external barbecue or awning heater. As your boiler's behind here, as it's underneath the bed, this is the flue for allowing the fumes out. So just make sure that's always obstruction free. You've got your fridge vents, your awning light and your awning. And then coming to the front, you've got your gas LPG. So that's your locker closed. Behind the passenger seat, there is a cable on a lever. So just pull that up. That'll release the door as it's on a cable system. On this vehicle, it's fitted with a gasset bottle. So this is a refillable gas bottle. So how to refill the bottle just underneath you take this cover off and you go to your local LPG centre. You'll notice it's a bayonet fitting, so you'd push the gun on, turn it, pull the trigger back, and then you'll press the button on the fuel filler display on the pump until simply it won't take any more. So something like this will probably take about 12 to 15 pounds to fill from empty. And then you do have space for another one, a smaller one if you want. And then you would turn it on and off from the top of the bottle. So turn it off when you travel. And then when you arrive on site, turn it on. Once you've turned it on, if you just press this black button here, which just allows the crush valve to open and it will allow the gas to run through into the motorhome. The passenger door, you've got your diesel filler. So this is where the ignition key comes into ha in. So you would start the engine with this, open your fuel filler with this, and you can open the cab doors, lock the doors and open the motorhome door. Opening the passenger door on the slam panel, you've got your tyre pressures. So five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI all round. Your tool kit is underneath. Tool kit's underneath your passenger seat. So it's got a jack and a brace and a torn eye. And underneath the floor is the location of the engine battery. Your bonnet release lives on the side of the passenger dashboard. So if you pull that, you'll be able to release on it and then there's a second catch just right underneath it just here but you can lift this up and then you have the various fluids so you've got your screen wash your power steering fluid your brake fluid and your coolant your engine oil and your dipstick paint cord earth for giving or receiving a jump start and then just under here if you lift this cover up you've got your positive put a charger on or jump in the vehicle should you need to this has been uprated by sv tech so that's the standard weight don't go off that now go off this one here so it's 4250 gross vehicle weight the maximum <coughs> train weight of this vehicle is 5000 and 45 kilograms and then you've got your front and back axle weights so it's giving you a bit bigger of a payload from this one so once inside the vehicle above the habitation door you've got your main 12 volt control panel which will start off first then you've got your heating and hot water this side so starting off on the left hand side this is your main control panel so you've got on off here which will either turn on 
your 12 volt if you're not hooked up solely off your leisure battery or if you are hooked up on mains you will have 240 volts so all your three pin sockets will work inside the vehicle and your mains appliances that you can plug into them will work as well this button here transfers the power from the leisure battery to the engine battery i would never recommend using this unless it's a very quick emergency because if your leisure battery went flat you can then use the vehicle battery to operate the motorhome side but why i'm not happy using this is if you were to use it too long you would flatten the engine battery and then you couldn't start the engine so we only use that in emergencies but don't if you don't have to you've got the pump here so if you're using the outside shower the inside shower the taps the toilets you've got to have this on should you have enough water on board to pressurize the water if you don't have any water on board don't turn this on as it will burn the element out on the pump this little switch here is for the awning light on the side of the motorhome outside so if you're sitting out underneath the awning canopy or you're leaving the vehicle unattended and you just want you're going to come back when it's a little bit darker to spot your vehicle you may want to put your awning light on scrolling through so this is the time the temperature of the inside of the motorhome and the ec 328s is your control panel from sergeant so scrolling down it tells you how good your leisure battery is how good your vehicle battery is your main supply you've got your fresh water level so it says 25 percent full of fresh water your waste zero because we've opened it from outside you've got your external temperature your current of amps that are currently coming off the leisure battery so this is what's being used at the moment so 0.2 amp your pump just leave that as it is you don't need to touch that you don't need to touch that either you've got your clock so you can set your clock if you want to go in by clicking this one here the middle one change your time set an alarm should you need to and you turn your alarm on and off by the middle one again and then a very event timers just the same to this side you've got your two water settings so you've got off in the middle starting at the top you've got 60 degrees of heating your water on its own then you've got 40 degrees of heating your water on its own so you'd use 60 if you were doing the dishes 40 if you were showering off in the middle heating on its own with no water so if you just if you didn't have any water on board and you just wanted to heat the vehicle you would just use the gas flame on its own and then at the far bottom you've got heating the water at 60 degrees and heating the vehicle then you've got the thermostat which is one to five five is equivalent to 30 degrees and you would just adjust that accordingly to the temperature you want the vehicle to be at so start again 60 degrees heating the water 40 degrees of heating the water at the top off on the o heating on its own on the gas flame and then the glass flame in 60 degrees is heating and hot water together this side you've got which energy source you want to use so you've chose what setting you want either you're heating your hot water or both together now you want to know which energy source to use of so you've got at the top two wiggly lines which is two kilowatts of electric so depending on the amperage that the site gives you through your hookah blade normally you can use two kilowatts of electric on most camping and caravanning clubs bigger sites on smaller cl sites you may have to use one kilowatt which is this one wiggly, one wiggly line below then you've got gas on its own if you're wild camping and you weren't hooked up at all because you would have no other source available bar than gas and then you've got gas and one kilowatt which is mixture two mixture one sorry and then you've got mixture two at the bottom which is gas and two kilowatts you'd use gas and two kilowatts more in the winter should you be away and it's very cold and you want to give the get the van a temperature quicker give it a boost or give the water a boost use that for 10 minutes and then don't waste your gas any longer than necessary and then you would just turn it up to two kilowatts but if you weren't in a desperate need to heat the vehicle you would just use electric if you're on site gas if you're well coming and then mixture two if you were in desperate need of heating the water or the vehicle in the winter months to lock the habitation door you can do it off the key or you can do it off the dash which i'll show you in the cab 
or you can do it manually if you just want to lock the door by just pushing this chrome catch in that's it locked as soon as you go for the lever it then opens the door you've got a black outline for the window and a fly screen there on the window these switches here so you've got fresh water tank heater and wastewater tank heater so if it's going to potentially drop to sub-zero degrees in the winter months when you're touring pop these on overnight and it'll stop the water from freezing in the tanks by having probes in the tanks to put current through the water to stop it freezing you've got your step switch here so this controls your step in and out and then you've got your light above your control panels Underneath your bed, you've got your boiler, which I've shown you from outside. So here's a closer look. So the boiler holds 10 litres of water as well as heating the vehicle. In the winter months, it's very important that you drain the water out of the water container. Because if not, it could freeze, split the cylinder, and then this isn't covered under warranty either because frost damage is down to you. You have to drain your vehicle down. So to drain it down, you would use this yellow toggle here so when it's lying down this is able to hold 10 litres of water if you stand this up like so the 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the chassis leave it stood up during the time you've got the vehicle stood up and not in use especially in the winter open all the taps throughout the motorhome so kitchen tap bathroom tap Remove the shower head from the shower hose and lie the hose in the tray with the mixer tap open so any water from any pipes behind the taps can filter through and any water in the shower hose doesn't coil up and freeze. Open the fresh and the waste outside and then when you come to reuse it, shut the taps outside, shut the boiler, shut all the taps inside. Fill the vehicle with fresh water from outside via a hose pipe come in put the main control panel on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water because it's filtering it through from the tank underneath the vehicle via the pump to the tap go to the hot side of the tap it'll start to cough cough splutter make all sorts of noises what that's doing is it's filtering it from the tank underneath the van it's then filling this full of 10 litres of water it's pushing all the air out through the tap until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap then you would do them all and then once all your taps are done on the hot side your system is primed for the season you can then use them and you'll have no faults with water until you come to redrain it down and then you'd have to do this procedure again but remember drain it down because it's not covered under warranty and these are very expensive You've got your wardrobe here with the hanging reel and underneath you've got some shelves your wheel arch does approach in the cupboard slightly and you've got some heater pipes there so this cupboard does get warm when the heating's on and you've got this switch here which is your fuse spur for your ultra heat which ultra heat heats the vehicle on electric so make sure that fuse spur is switched on to then control the switches above the habitation door but what I would do is just leave it on and forget about it it only gonna work this fuse spur when you hooked up it doesn't operate the gas side so just leave it as it is unless you did have a problem with your ultra heat and then you can isolate it here on mains electric so now in the kitchen area so you do have four burners One's electric, which is this side here, which only works on 240 when you hooked up on a site. And then you do have three gas. So this just shows that your gas is operating, so there is gas in that gas bottle. And then underneath, you've got your grill. Keep a hold of the knob for a little bit until the thermocouple gets warm and then release and it'll stay lit and below you've got your oven you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling because this can be the main cause of the rattling 
and press the panel in and underneath you've got your plug for your electric hot plate should that be giving you any grief or any bother you can unhook it and you've got some storage storage in here press the buttons in releases the travel catch and you've got a drawer and a cutlery drawer at the top large storage here and storage racks which slide out beside the sink once you've had these on allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down obviously because glass will smash with heat plate bowl and cup racks for your various items to be stored away when traveling electric microwave which will only work when hooked up which is a 700 watt microwave so you've got to be hooked up for that to work and then you do have your sink covers and your tap so you've got your water so make sure the pumps aren't to pressurize it that water's coming through there nice and warm now but it shows that your hot water is operating correctly splashback light and kitchen light and then this is your dimmer for these lights here so you can just control it by the wheel to dim them at full or bring them down should you want the light on but not as bright all your little reading lights are individually switched in the lounge and the same in the wash in, in the bedroom area and then across from the kitchen you do have your fridge so you turn on and off here Temperature this side, so 5 being the coldest, which you'll probably want when pre chilling the fridge. Once you get the shop in, you'll want to turn it down to 3 or 4 because it does get really cold and sometimes it can damage your shopping, which you don't want to give the shopping fridge burn when you've just bought it. Click here, it'll change the source. So you'll notice it says auto and it's got a picture of a hooker blade. Auto stands for automatic changeover so the brain of the fridge picks out what best source we have on offer so we're hooked up at the moment so it's went to hook up if i was to take the hook up out now it would go to gas because the gas bottle's open and light on gas if i was then to start the engine it will go to the battery setting which isn't your leisure battery it's a feed off the engine alternator which turns the fridge into a giant cool box so you've got to pre-chill it beforehand on either gas or electric so if you're traveling from home and you're lucky enough to keep this at home hook it up a couple of days before you go away the fridge will then act as a household fridge as it's receiving 240 volt the night before put your shopping in allow it to chill overnight and then when you are ready if it's on auto start the engine unhook and you're good to go if not you can press it and you can change it manually so we've got a battery there and it's showing a code 10 and that's flashing which means it's failed because it's not receiving a 12 volt feed click again and it's lit on gas i'll go back to auto and it'll do it all itself please note with automatic if you were to leave the gas open and you were to pull in for diesel it'll not find 240 because you're not hooked up it'll not find 12 volts because you'll have just knocked the engine off but it may find gas this fridge is already programmed to wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas so when you do go while camping and you pull over and your fridge is on automatic and it's flashing for 20 minutes and you wonder why it's not lighting it's because it's a safety feature so all you would have to do is manually turn it over by pressing here until you get the gas flame when you finish with using the fridge for any length of time so say you're not using it for a couple of weeks or you're putting it away for a couple of months in the winter when you winterize the vehicle you'll want to to empty the fridge, clean it out with some Dettol or antibacterial sprays, wipes and the last thing you want to do is shut the door because if it's rubber seal it'll trap the air in and it'll form mould and bacteria so underneath the catches if you just pull them there's these grey little levers that you can pull out these go into these little hinges and what that does is it keeps the door open ajar for air ventilation Next to the fridge you do have your table, so it's a freestanding table, so you can have it at the front or you can have it outside or wherever you want it, should it be a nice suitable day for it to go outside. Now in the washroom, you've got your large shower cubicle and there's a little turnbuckle on the back there 
to hold the shower tray back when traveling so make sure that's on before you set off and then your shower head like i've said about winterizing remove this that lies down in the tray leave the mixer top open because as you can see it's coiled up any water could freeze in there toilet cabinet bathroom light switch and your sink to operate the toilet on the back press the blue button underneath the Fedford logo. This is your fresh water flush. So flush the toilet first to lubricate the seal on the blade. Then open the toilet, which is slide this gray lever to the right, push it away from you. That opens the blade. You can then use the toilet. And why you would do it this way is it Lubricates the seal on the blade, stops it getting stuck and stops the top of the blade from getting messy. Use the toilet, everything will go into the cassette. Flush after use and then slide this back towards you to the left. Once you get a few lights underneath the cassette diagram, it's time to empty the cassette and then replenish it with chemical. If you were gonna use any bowl cleaners, because this is a fresh water flush, unlike the caravans and the older motorhomes where they had a header tank, which where you could put your pink solution in. If you put your pink solution diluted into a spray bottle, you can spray it and then flush and it'll give you the fragrant smell and keep the bowl nice and clean. And then above, you've got a skylight, so you push this button in, pull the bar back, right the way or you can put it into the little channels there to keep the skylight open. Make sure the bar is pushed up and the buttons pushed out before you travel because you can't travel with these open and you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind. So in your front lounge to make the second double bed you've got to pull these out and then put the backrest in the middle to form the double bed and it's just as easy as that. It is quite a tight squeeze but it's designed to be and then turn your back rests the other way and you'll get a flatter surface to sleep on. In the cupboard above your lounge just behind your driver's seat you've got your AC 328 unit which is your power supply unit so you've got all your 12 volt fuses here for your various 12 volt appliances which are all listed so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses which you can get from most motor factors halfords anywhere like that caravan shops and in this side you've got your rcd so your main trip test and your mcbs build number which is unique to every auto trail so if you ever need parts you can quote that number we can pop it into auto trails website and we can get the right part for you and then as you've got a vision plus TV aerial, this is your TV booster, so there's a little button on here where you can amplify the signal up or down should you be struggling to get a signal. If it's on max and it's still pixelating, it might be too strong, so you may just need to turn it down. And then you've got this little switch here, which operates the screen here, which runs through the head unit for your TV. So once the screen's on, you'll be able to see the telly like it is now, which I'll run through in a moment. Your aerial's in this cupboard, so if you are struggling to get a signal, you can unwind the white nut, push the stem up, and then use the toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial. But always, before travel, pull it in and tighten the nut so the wind doesn't rip the aerial off the roof. So on your head unit, you can turn it on in the top left-hand corner. You do have an auxiliary in and a USB for when you are traveling and you want to put your music on. And then to get the telly to work, you just press mode. So pressing between mode, it'll change between FM. Press mode again, you want AV in, which is your TV. So the Digibox that's in the cupboard, I'll send a feed to here, which is your TV, which is then monitored via that switch to the monitor screen which is here and then you'll have your TV you always want to retune it before you when you change sites and you've got your aerial your TV remote here 
So pointing to this here, which is the infrared eye, turn the volume up, turn the volume up on the head unit as well as it runs through the cab speakers. You can go up and down your channels. And then you can go to the menu. And you want to go to scan, which is the second one in. Press enter. Scan type auto scan, press enter again. And it'll start to do a scan and it'll find as many channels as it can in your area. So make sure you you are retuning the telly by going into menu, scan, auto scan, and retuning each time you move locations. So now in the cab, to the right of the driver, you do have your handbrake. And then you've got your electric window, so driver and passenger side, and electric mirror adjustment. So there's two, two mirrors on each side. So one, the big one, and, and the bottom being the blind spot, which you can control and adjust via here. Remus carb blinds on the, the whole cab, so pinch and slide out. I'll black the passenger and driver's doors. Pinch and slide. This is fitted with a dash cam, this model, so you will have to remove that. So simply... Pull that off. Disconnect the cable. Store that away. And then you'll be able to pull this one out. And they'll be able to meet in the middle. And that will black out the whole cab on an evening. Headlight adjustment, rear fog lights. This is fitted with a category one alarm. There's another video on how to disarm these sensors if you want to arm it with yourselves in or you want to leave any animals such as dogs in. Because as soon as you lock up with a key and you start walking around, it'll pick you up and set the alarm off. If you press from here and lock it from the inside, it shouldn't set the alarm off when you're inside. So you'll only need to do that if you're leaving it with your animals in. Trip computer on the end of the wiper stalk, which will go through the screen. So instant and average consumption range, traveling times, travel, mileage covered, and so on. Lights and indicators, so off, side lights, lights, indicators. And then you've got cruise control, so you turn it on and push up. Cancel with a foot brake, resume on the end of the stalk to the last speed set before the engine was turned off. Rear view camera, which is on all the time, no matter if you're in neutral, first or sixth, but you lift the collar and go into reverse, and it's the same picture. Head unit I've already been through, but then you do have on the outside ring of this side, on the left one, the temperature. Fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is this one here. And you do have your distribution, so where you want the air to go to and whether you are recirculating air or bringing fresh air in. Padlocks, which locks the doors, locks the habitation door as well. So it locks the cab and the hab door from the dashboard. You will have to manually lock your lockers, hazards, rear fog lights, and heated mirrors. Lockable center glove box, glove box here, and glove box there, which is heated and cooled by the air conditioning. So if you want to keep any sweets, keep them in here or chocolate, It'll save you getting up to the fridge. And then to turn your seats. Little lever here, pull it back. You may have to adjust the big bar to get it all the way around into the rear. But then make sure they're locked in. When you hear them click in, they're locked in for travel.